Greetings and salutations, Ed Bud here. I'm back today to answer a question that many viewers have posted in the comments and also asked me over on Strava as to whether the Nike React Infinity Run is a stability shoe or not. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done already. You may be a new viewer. If you are, please do hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so you'll be informed of when new videos are released. So today I'm going to be talking about whether the new Nike Racked Infinity Run... Oh, it's a real look at this one, I really love it. I really love it. Oh yes! Um, whether this is a stability shoe or not. I've received lots and lots of comments, uh, both on YouTube and over on Strava, as to whether this shoe really is a stability shoe. For me, I feel it's a kind of middle ground between a sort of more rigid stability shoe and a more neutral shoe. But I'm gonna go into that and also provide a little comparison against a recent shoe that I've tested out from ASICS, the Glide Ride. So is this an out and out stability shoe? Is it for those who need assistance in terms of correction, in terms of their running gait or their foot strike? I would suggest, whoa, hold on there, stop, stop. I don't think that that is the main aim of this shoe. I'm no professional, I have to state, but I think people get overtly obsessed by running gait and foot strike, etc. I'm a non-elite athlete. I want to make that very, very clear now. Okay, guys, I'm the guy who just likes running. I enjoy it. I enjoy enjoying other people's running as well. I really like to get out there, cheer people on, to show appreciation for other people's efforts. I'm not looking to win medals. I'm not looking to win races. I just enjoy running. And I enjoy shoes as well, but you already knew that. I have a theory that your body, to a certain extent, corrects itself through that kind of running cycle, through that running gait. Walk around with no shoes on for a little while. Does it feel different? Does it feel odd? Does it feel kind of otherworldly? Yes, of course it does. Shoes can make us walk or run or move around in a slightly different way than we would typically without them. I think unless a runner has a very significant issue in terms of their gait, then I feel that very aggressive stabilization can have a very detrimental effect. I feel that sometimes those stability shoes even cause more or new problems um, than if you were not wearing them. I think they can cause further issues sometimes. You're kind of forcing your body to do something that it doesn't want to do. Again, I'm no professional, but I just see people for what they are. We're all different. We're all created differently. We're all individuals. So in my initial review of the Nike React Infinity Run, I did mention that the forefoot has quite a considerable surface area here. And in fact, in the rear of the shoe here, it's almost like an hourglass throughout the midfoot and outsole. A couple of people have asked actually, is it quite narrow in the arch area of the foot? A little bit. I wouldn't say it's as extreme as something like the, as the Vaporfly 4%, you know, that is quite narrow. If we compare the two actually, yeah, this one's much more narrow in the arch area of the foot. But feeling on foot is actually quite similar. It's certainly not a racing shoe. I think the weight will put some people off from purchasing this one. If you're looking for a shoe that can do lots and lots of things, perhaps a very versatile shoe, probably isn't gonna be the one you go for. I think the very clear comparison here is between this and the Glide Ride. Although the React Infinity Run doesn't feel quite as constrictive around the forefoot. It's not as constrictive or containing in the ankle and rear of the shoe. I've never really thought of the React series from Nike as a stability series of shoes. I opted for the Pegasus 35 last year rather than the Epic React. I kind of missed that shoe. It kind of went under my radar a little bit. But I know lots of you out there are big fans of the Epic React. Where I work, there's uh, some sports uh, related lecturers and they really love the Epic React series. That plastic reinforced area of the shoe around here really does allow the heel to sit nicely back into the midsole. I think worth noting is that there aren't any additional eyelets here on top of the shoe. It's really much a one shot deal here. You need to be able to get a decent level of lockdown utilizing what's there. I think that rather than an out and out stability shoe that Nike are trying to create a maximally cushioned shoe in this effort and thus one which has much greater 
mass appeal. In the same way that they adapted the Vaporfly 4% Flynet into the Vaporfly Next% Percent with a new upper, wider landing zone in the midfoot and forefoot and making it more accommodating on foot, I feel that this is an attempt to create a shoe that's for a much wider audience. A wider range of runners will probably be interested in the Infinity Run. I think recovery is something that we've all got to be very interested in as runners. It's quite an addictive sport. You know, you want to keep getting out there. You want to get out there the next day. You can feel a little bit under pressure sometimes. You know, people are saying, oh, yeah, have you been out? Oh, I've been out for two days. I think we have to listen to our bodies. I think this shoe could help us to do that. It does have some fantastic cushioning and it's going to help people's bodies recover on those slower miles. It's kind of why I've been a big fan of the Pegasus Turbo, actually. I find that a great shoe because of its versatility and its cushioning. Every time I use a Zumax shoe, certainly for training purposes, my legs always feel fantastic the next day. And up to this point, it's a similar case with the Infinity Run. Again, drawing some comparisons against the Glide Ride, there's that obvious rocker type situation in the midfoot here in the Infinity Run. Although it's far less aggressive and the midsole is much more forgiving. I feel it's a little more cushioned than Glide Ride and it feels a little less clunky on foot. It just kind of seems to be more of a kind of gummy responsive feeling whereas there's a bit more kind of snap and push from the Glide Ride. Certainly the heel lock achieved from the uh, lacing system here over the forefoot in the Glide Ride is considerable but it has to be due to the more rigid nature of that midsole foam. Otherwise your heel will just be kind of slipping out. You know, it is a much more rigid shoe, this one. In fact, you can hardly you can hardly bend it. I'm really trying now, guys, I'm really trying. I think I need to do some more strength training. The Infinity Run is far more forgiving that aspect. Look, it's, it's loads more give to it. After those initial nine miles in the Infinity Run, my legs felt really great the next day. There's much less restriction around this ankle area. It feels less like the shoe is fighting against your normal running gait. As you get up onto the midfoot and the forefoot of the shoe and increase the pace, you do start feeling the weight a little bit more. Though I found that the structured elements of the shoe towards the rear felt less and less prominent at higher paces. So I hit it for another nine miles in this shoe yesterday and it just felt really, really effortless. I didn't experience any real notable issues whatsoever. The heel area fly net is structured just enough to hug the heel and prevent any slippage or kind of over rotation. I haven't felt any discomfort around here, any rubbing, anything like that. It really is very smooth. In comparison to the React Field Zoomfly 3, the heel area here is far, far more stable. In the Zoomfly 3, you kind of sink back into that. Now, I know that that's aimed as being a racing shoe. It's got the carbon fiber plate and so on and so on. But lots of other runners are wearing that shoe who are midfoot or even heel striking. I mean, it's very much a shoe where a forefoot or a midfoot strike is what it's aimed at. I know that, okay, I know that, guys. Here, that React midsole and the more rigid heel counter will give a helping hand to the runner as perhaps they begin to fatigue. That slight curve at the back of the shoe here does promote that kind of rocker action if you are a heel striker. And that certainly became apparent to me perhaps a little towards the end of my run. Uh, I could start to feel that uh, rocker action just a little bit towards the end. So is this a stability shoe? I would suggest yes, it is. Is it so prominent to change your running gait or your foot strike, I would suggest no. If you're a fan of very maximally cushioned shoes or perhaps you're returning to training after a particularly tough marathon or an ultra run, this shoe could be fantastic for you. If you're somebody who's racking up miles, you're perhaps doing a marathon, um, shout out to Natalie, one of our running club members and also Graham. I know that they're undertaking the London Marathon next year. They're gonna be plowing in lots and lots of miles now, perhaps some lower paces there. This shoe could be very, very useful for you. It's certainly a much soft, it's certainly a much softer shoe than the Asics Glide Ride in terms of the midfoot. They are gonna clock in around about the same price and there's not gonna be an awful lot in it in terms of price on these two. I think you feel a little less elevated off the floor in the Infinity Run than the Glide Ride. You've still got a relatively decent 
connected feeling with the surface under your foot in the Infinity Run. It is possible to feel a little bit detached from the terrain and the surface you're running on in the Glide Ride. The upper of the shoe is much, much lighter around the forefoot than in the Asics Glide Ride. This is very much built as a serious durability shoe. This one, more of a perhaps versatile shoe in terms of pace, perhaps. I think certainly comparing it to something like the Structure 21 or the Structure 22, React is a much more forgiving midsole material than the use of Cushlon and Zoom Air. I think it's really a halfway house between cushioning and stability, which is, in my opinion, going to benefit runners by reducing fatigue and also boosting recovery. I think that this is an ideal combination for runners of all abilities. It's gonna minimize fatigue over distance for those who are building up their mileage base. If you're one of my American viewers, I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving, you spent it with your families, and you had a wonderful, peaceful time. Please comment below with any questions you might have for me on this shoe. I'm really, really lucky to have it. I'm very appreciative to have it. I think it's really important to remember and to appreciate just how lucky some of us all are. And there are people out there who are not quite so lucky, especially this time of year. Please subscribe if you like listening to me going on about shoes for hours on end. You'll be really, really pleased that you did. Please give it a like if you liked it. Hit that bell for notifications and share the love. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.